Thanks for the copy strike, Last of Us. Appreciate it. What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Jeremy coming to you with another video, and today we are going to talk about The Last of Us Part 2 and why it is a massive failure of storytelling and how we even got to the point of them having this massive failure in storytelling. Now, Obviously, I did a reaction to PewDiePie's initial reaction to seeing what happens with Joel in The Last of Us Part 2. And if it's not clear already, I'm going to be talking major, major spoilers about this game. So if you don't want to know anything else, please click off the video. And if you want to continue, here we go. Okay, so in The Last of Us Part 2, the beloved character of Joel is murdered by Abby, a very, very unlikable character that you are also forced to play as in the game. Now, that in isolation is fine, as long as the storytelling elements have led us to a place to where it makes sense, but they don't. It's very early in the game, coming off of a very popular the Last of Us, the first game where you are introduced to the character of Joel and Ellie and their relationship is the main reason why so many, so many people love that game. Now as we get into The Last of Us 2, we have Joel dying very, very, very early in the game after, after a marketing campaign that blatantly misled the audience into thinking that Joel had a more significant role in this game. They blatantly inserted him into scenes that he was not part of to make it look like he was more invested in this game than he really was. That is them knowing how much the audience cares about this character, yet they treated him like shit in the game. Now, that's only one element. So we've already reached a point where Joel has died by the hands of Abby. Now, PewDiePie was playing this game... I'm going to show you a clip that shows you exactly why this is a massive failure in storytelling. Abby's gonna die, Abby's gonna die, I hate that bitch, I hate that bitch. Abby's gonna die, Abby's gonna die, fuck that bitch, fuck that bitch, Abby's gonna die. Okay, now there's the clip, and it's 100% spot on. Once Abby kills Joel, you are very angry at Abby. And at that point in time, the payoff is, through this long story, through this journey, you want to kill Abby. You want to see Abby suffer. You want to see her suffer bad. It's, it's, it's a simple little thing in storytelling that should not be complicated. As a kid, do you remember that scene in Superman 2? Do you remember when Clark walked into that diner and he didn't have his powers? He was there with Lois. Rocky walks in the bar. The truck driver, arrogant as hell, beats the hell out of Clark. And even Clark tries to stand up to him and he just beats the hell out of him again. There is nothing more satisfying than when Superman returns at the end of that movie with his powers back and he beats the hell out of Rocky. I used to beat the hell out of him. He embarrasses him, you know, slides him across the bar there. So satisfying to watch that come back full circle. That was so satisfying. Why is it satisfying to see Superman uh, embarrass a, a regular human being when we all know Superman is this all-powerful being? It's because of the storytelling process. It's because we saw Rocky beat Clark down because Rocky was an arrogant bully. He's in there flirting with Lois, and Clark didn't have his powers. Clark was just a regular guy, and Rocky beat the hell out of him. And Rocky, by the storytelling that was shown in the movie, was shown to be a bully. He would he would rough anybody up that got in his way. Everyone was intimidated by him. So by the end of the movie, we get to see Superman embarrass him, and we all found such satisfaction with that. Well, in The Last of Us Part 2, we don't get that. Through the journey, through the journey of Ellie, after she witnesses Joel murdered at the hands of Abby, at the, after the journey is over, and she finally reaches Abby after the audience has been forced to play as Abby through this game at time, finally, Ellie reaches Abby. 
Abby is not in a good place. She's not physically ready to even challenge Ellie, but they fight. They fight and eventually Ellie lets her walk free. You let Joel's killer walk free. This is awful. This is terrible storytelling. And it's not just isolated to that, but it goes all the way back to the beginning of why did you treat Joel like this? Why did he have to end up in the place where he would never be? Joel is not that dumb. Joel is very smart. Joel is intelligent. And you made him out to be an idiot to find himself in that position. And then to see him killed in that manner. And then to not even decide to pay it off, you let his killer walk free. This is horrific storytelling. Look, you can like the game. You can think that the gameplay is great. You can think the environment is great. You can think that the graphics are beautiful. And it all looks wonderful. It really does. I have, I'm not playing the game. I have watched all of the content that I could possibly watch. But I'm not purchasing this game. Number one, because fuck Naughty Dog. Number two, because fuck Naughty Dog. And number three, because fuck Naughty Dog. Because they have struck down so many different YouTube channels, Twitter accounts, Reddit accounts, simply for having opinions. Myself included. So, I am not playing the game. I have the first Last of Us. Very much enjoyed that game. And while this game wasn't necessarily on my radar... Um, without all of the nonsense, I would have at least experienced this game, but with everything that they've done as a company, I absolutely will not support this company, but I will, I will roast them. And this is a massive failure of storytelling. This is not overly complicated, considering that you already built characters and relationships and a world that the fans were attached to. Fans loved these characters, fans loved that relationship between Joel and Ellie. You already had us. And no one is upset that Joel died. Not in isolation. It's not about the fact that Joel died. It's about the fact that you had no respect for him. You had no respect for his life or his death. And you showed us that through your lack of storytelling through this entire process. The Last of Us Part Two will go down as one of the biggest disasters in video game history. Will it sell well? Probably so. Guess what? Game of Thrones Season 8 had incredible uh, ratings. Incredible! But it is always going to be known as the biggest collapse in TV history. The Last Jedi made $1.3 billion, but it is the film that broke Star Wars, broke the fandom, Woke so many people up, like me. I got woke. I got woke off of The Last Jedi because it woke me up and I red-pilled myself. And it finally showed me what was going on within Disney, Lucasfilm, the entertainment industry as a whole. The Last of Us will be The Last Jedi of Us, as Gary from Nerdrotic has called it. The Last Jedi of Us Part 2 will go down as a failure in storytelling a failure of a sequel, and a failure to fans everywhere. Have you experienced this game, either watching playthroughs or for yourself? What do you think? We will also have a review on geeksandgamers.com. It will not be from me. It will be from one of our writers named Mike. And Mike may have a different take altogether from me, and that's perfectly fine if he does. I don't know what his opinions are going to be, but that's the beautiful thing about Geeks and Gamers is we have different opinions everywhere. And Mike is going to have his take, and anyone else at Geeks and Gamers is going to have their take, and this is my take. My take is, fuck Naughty Dog. You guys have a great day. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Also, please visit geeksandgamers.com, our website. We have forums. We have a profile. You sign up, make, get a free profile. Um, join the forums, get involved in the discussion, and then consider becoming a premium member for only $10 a month. Look forward to seeing you over on the website. And that is about it. So uh, thank you very much for checking out this video. Solo lost money. Raylos are weird. Fuck Naughty Dog. And we will talk to you later. Uh, and as a game creator, I look around at kind of what we are making and what are going to be her role models from, from our other stories. And I don't like what I see. Fuck Naughty Dog. Fuck Naughty Dog.
Naughty Dog absolutely made this worse because they poured gasoline on the fire. You created it and then you poured gasoline on it and made it significantly worse. It could have just died out. It could have went away. But you started to attack people, silencing them, striking down their channels. Not good.